Welcome to another installment of the Landscape Management Network's newsletter videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at man versus machine, or more appropriately, how you can build a better, more profitable landscape company by knowing how to use people and equipment most effectively to maximize your sales and your profit. Dan is a landscape contractor and the owner of Danscaping Inc. He's your typical landscaper and he's got your typical landscaper problems. One of Dan's biggest concerns is finding a way to increase his profit this year. And just piling on more work isn't the solution that Dan is looking for. First, there's the economy. Dan's worried about trying to grow in this current economy. Things are slow, and everyone is still unsure of exactly where it's going. And then there's the problems with growing his business. He needs to sell more work but Dan already feels overworked. He'll have to hire and manage more people, and finding good people, especially keeping them, has always been one of his biggest challenges. Then along came a job that, by chance, changed the way that Dan looked at his company and its efficiency. The job was some standard tree planting work. They needed to plant 40 medium-sized trees up a driveway and around a newly constructed building. Dan built the job the way he thought it would get done. He'd drop off a crew of four guys and put them on the job for about four days. They'd dig the holes by hand and plant the trees. And he calculated his costs like this. Four guys by four days meant he'd have about 160 hours of labor on this job. Now Dan calculates the cost of his hourly labor at about $25 an hour. $25 an hour includes the cost of the employee's wages, the cost of labor burden, that's his unemployment insurance and workers' compensation insurance and vacation pay, etc., and the cost of downtime. That's time that's spent on payroll, but not actually working on billable work for customers. So Dan takes the $25 an hour and multiplies it by the 160 hours needed to get the job done to calculate his total labor costs at $4,000. Dan also knows his truck and trailer cost him about $130 a day in ownership, operating, and fuel costs. Four days of a truck and trailer at $130 a day works out to be $520 in equipment costs. And Dan got a good quote on the trees and delivery to site, plus some stakes and hoes. That material was going to cost him $3,600. Add it all together, Dan expected this job to cost him $8,120, and he was going to add profit and overhead to price it accordingly. But then Dan remembered a job they did recently, digging footings for a wall, and how much faster his mini X completed the work versus the crew of three diggers that he'd originally estimated. So Dan decided to run the numbers on this job again, but this time, he was going to use his company's skid steer with an auger attachment and a material handling arm to move and install the trees. This time his costs look like this. With this equipment on site, Dan could put the 40 trees in with two guys in only two days. The machines would move, dig and maneuver the material much faster than if the guys were doing the work by hand. With two guys in two days, Dan would only have 40 hours into this job. And at $25 an hour again, he figured he'd have about a thousand in labor costs for this project. His labor was calculated, now he needed to do his equipment costs, and they were up a bit. He still needed his truck and trailer at 130 a day, plus a skid steer at 250 a day, plus the auger attachment, which, averaged out across its life, costs him roughly $40 a day. So his total equipment costs for this two-day job are $840, and nothing really changed with his material costs. That was still going to cost him $3,600. This time, now that he was using the right equipment, Dan figured out his job costs at $5,440. This same job, done two different ways, made a really big difference on how much the job was going to cost Dan. Using manpower, Dan was looking at costs of $8,120 to get the job done. But with the right equipment, Dan only needed to spend $5,440 to get the same work done. He could do the job with the right equipment for about two-thirds the cost of what it would take to do by hand. 
and those numbers included all the costs of the equipment he needed. This information surprised Dan. He was used to throwing a few low-end laborers on a job to dig all day and not being too worried about the cost. Now we started to see that doing the job with the right equipment would give him some really powerful options. Dan could lower his price to the customer and improve his chances of winning the job. Or maybe he had room to increase his profit margins. But most likely, he could use a combination of both. He could lower his price to the customer somewhat, but also make a better profit margin than he did on his typical jobs. Using equipment on this job freed up $2,680. He definitely had room to lower his price, make sure he won the job, and he could also afford to keep more money in his pocket. Looking back at Dan's problem, increasing profit, Dan realized just how much he could improve his profit by making sure, when he was estimating, that he used the most efficient means of completing the work. He might not be able to increase his sales, but at least he'd be more profitable. At least that's what he thought until he looked at his bid again. Dan could definitely be cheaper and be more profitable using the right equipment. But what he also realized is that he could also increase his sales and without having to hire more people. Looking at his cost of this job again, Dan realized a critical advantage. Using equipment to reduce the number of people on the job, Dan freed up a total of 12 man days. Without machines, Dan needed four guys in four days to get the work done. But with the right equipment for the job, Dan could get the same work done with two guys in two days. He was saving a full 12 man days. And what was he going to do with them? He wasn't going to lay those guys off for those days. He was going to put them to work on other projects, on work that couldn't be done with a machine. Now, Dan had expanded his company's billable opportunity. If Dan billed out his crews at $50 an hour and they worked 10 hour days, Dan just freed up $6,000 worth of sales opportunity to complete more billable work this year. He could put those guys on laying pavers, on installing plant material, or building a deck, work that wasn't going to be done by a machine, and he could get through those projects that much faster. He just added 12 billing days to his company's sales capacity, and he didn't need to find or hire any more workers to do it. Stacked up against each other, now these two ways of doing the same job looked very different. Through the use of equipment to work more efficiently, Dan's company gained some incredible advantages. He lowered his production costs, making him more efficient. He could afford to lower his price to the customer, making him more competitive. With his approved efficiency, there was room for higher profit margins, making him more profitable. And he freed up his most valuable resource, his manpower, to complete more billable work without increasing the number of working hours for his crews. Every landscaper has a sales capacity. Your sales capacity is the amount of sales you can complete given the resources you have within your company. Equipment and materials are easy resources to get more of. There are many vendors who are ready and waiting to sell you quality products, tools, and machines to help you expand that side of your business. But with labor, business growth is difficult. In fact, hiring and managing labor is consistently one of the biggest problems faced by green industry owners. First you need to find good people, then you need to manage them correctly. And the more people you hire, the less time you have to manage each crew. And eventually, you need to hire people who can help you manage people because there's just too much going on for one person. But then again, good managers and supervisors aren't that easy to find either. So for most landscape contractors, your sales capacity is limited by your ability to find and retain great staff who can get work done without requiring too much management. Now the secret of running a great landscape business lies in the owner's ability to maximize a company's sales capacity by capturing every available billable man hour. If man hours are your toughest resource, then it makes sense that maximizing those hours is the key to success. With more work being done with more equipment, Dan could get around one of the biggest problems he'd found in trying to grow his sales. And that was trying to find, hire, and manage staff who could reliably bring jobs in on time and on budget. 
planning for the right equipment on his jobs, Dan found that he could grow both his sales and his profit, and he didn't need to add more crews or more people. He could simply improve his sales by leveraging equipment to get more work done in less time. Selling jobs in any economy was also going to be easier. Danscaping's costs, using the right equipment to do the work, were significantly less. Now Dan had the best of both worlds. He could afford to charge his customers less, which made selling his jobs easier, but he also had an opportunity for bigger profit margins. He could compete on price, not because he made the least profit, but because his company could do the work most productively. And the fastest is a lot more profitable than the cheapest. And the easier he sold jobs, the less time he spent chasing sales, leads, and quoting jobs that he wasn't winning. Even Dan's lifestyle began improving. Equipment can't yet outthink people, but it can sure outwork them. Dollar for dollar, equipment is more profitable, requires less management, and is much more efficient at doing work. If you really want to take your landscaping company to the next level, take the time to look at your current operations and how you might replace manual labor with equipment to improve both sales and profits. The right equipment's going to give your company a powerful advantage over your competitors. Lower costs to do the jobs mean increased sales as your prices become more competitive. Lower costs can also mean higher profits, which can mean better rewards for the owner and the key employees in the business. Jobs get done more efficiently. Jobs get done more safely with less risk of physical injury lifting or carrying heavy materials. Customers are happier because your jobs are done faster and you're in and out and waking them up and their neighbors in less time. Happier customers mean more referrals. And you can do the same or more work without managing more people. Growing your people is the hardest part of growing a good company. So if you can find a way to grow without relying on people, you're on to something good. Thanks for watching this video. We're the Landscape Management Network, and we help great landscape contractors build great landscape businesses. For more information on who we are, check out our website at www.landscapemanagementnetwork.com. And here's wishing you a productive and profitable landscape season.